Hey guys, Dean here, back again with another ChatGPT AI video. Today I'm going to be talking about the brand new ChatGPT plugins which were released a few weeks ago. They've now got a little bit more advanced and there's so many different plugins you can download from the plugin store on ChatGPT's interface. So I'm going to show you how to enable these plugins, how to install them and use them, and give you a few examples of certain plugins available and their use cases, and explain how the whole concept works, and the fact that you don't have to actually download them. So let's begin. So right now we're inside the ChatGPT Plus interface because I am a ChatGPT Plus subscriber. And to install plugins, I believe these are only available if you're subscribed to ChatGPT Plus. So that means you have access to ChatGPT's GPT-4 model. This is the most capable model, great for tasks that require creativity and better reasoning. So if you're not subscribed to Plus and you're not a Plus subscriber, this probably won't work for you because you do need to have a subscription. So by default, we have GPT-3.5 for free and Plus users. That's the really fast model but it uses old training data. But for this video, we're going to be using GPT-4, which does still have the soft cap of 25 messages every three hours. So how do we enable plugins? Well, we go to these little three dots down here in the left-hand side of the corner and press settings. And this takes us into the settings interface. Now, what we talked about a while ago was their introduction to the data controls. So that was disabling the chat history and training. Now, the downside of this is if we just wanted to disable the chat history, we'd also have to disable the training. So vice versa, right? So if we want to disable our data being shared to train the model, we'd also have to prevent being able to save our chats and have a history of our chats, which is kind of a big downside. Now, they've obviously done this intentionally because to train their model, they want to use your data. So we did cover that originally, but for today's video, we're talking about this beta features tab. So on beta features, as a plus user, you can enjoy early access to their experimental new features. So in this case, this is going to be our plugins. So we can try a version of ChatGPT that knows when and how to use third-party plugins, which we're going to enable in a few moments. And also, there's another feature which we'll talk about a little bit in this video, and that's Browse with Bing. So this enables you to use a model of ChatGPT that knows how to browse the internet to answer questions about recent topics and events. Now, prior to this release of plugins and the Bing model, we were using kind of like as a workaround, we were using Google Chrome plugins. I have three to four ChatGPT plugins that really extends this platform by integrating Google Chrome's plugin system into it. So this allows me to save prompts, to create my own prompts and save them for later, access other users' prompts, and basically allow for much more fun on the website. And also, there's a plugin where you can integrate Google Search into it. But with Browse with Bing, it allows us to use Microsoft Search Engine instead, completely natively within ChatGPT software. So, once you tick these, just press the X button, there's no save button required, and now, when we hover over our GPT-4 model, we now actually have access to plugins. So, we have defaults, so that's if you just want to use it typically as you usually would, but also we have browse with Bing, which we'll check out a little bit later, and this new plugins feature. So once we click plugins, it says no plugins enabled. Now you'll see over here, I have quite a few plugins. Before we move on to the plugin store, I just want to show you an example of a few plugins I've downloaded. In the past, we had to get complex prompts, but now some of these plugins are built on just providing you with information. So they're already built on pre-made prompts or they allow you to not have to have the best prompts to complete an action, right? So for example, we have a meme creator to create memes based on the power of AI. We have chat with a video so we can ask questions, analyze and pass information via YouTube videos by just simply providing a URL. So that's a really powerful plugin as well. We have AI tool hunt. So there's websites out there like there's an AI for that where you can just find tools for literally everything. This basically does the same thing. You can give it a query and it'll search for a tool that matches that specification that you're looking for. SEO assistant is for search engine optimization. So it's going to help with keywords and ranking in search engines. Currency converter. You could just use Google for that. But it's going to provide you with real-time currency conversion rates and market data. There's also plugins for accessing the news. So if you like to follow the news, world events, what's going on, there's also plugins for that too. So there's a lot of data in these plugins and a lot of different use cases for it. There's an AI for that, the website I mentioned before. They also have a very similar plugin for the same purpose as the previous one, right? Portfolios Lab, this is for viewing analysis data on crypto, stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds. We can have a look at things like certain metrics, volatility, risk breakdowns, we have CoinCap to get information about cryptocurrencies, just like CoinMarketCap websites you use that for. Things to find certain comics. You can create Spotify playlists based on any prompts, which I think is particularly incredible because there's websites where you can import your YouTube playlists directly into Spotify so you can import them from one platform to another. But this, it just lets you type in what kind of music you want and it'll just create a playlist for you. Pretty incredible stuff. Chat with PDF lets you chat with everything from entire PDF books to Google Drive documents just 
just by providing the link. So most of these plugins are kind of bridging the platform together with certain different technologies. So we can provide a link like a YouTube video, a PDF link, and it'll allow ChatGPT to recognize that data and pull information from it. The same what the Bing system does that we took a look at a few moments ago, which integrates Microsoft Bing. So now you've seen a few examples of these plugins and some use cases for them and why we would download them. Let me show you how to actually download plugins. Now, when you would download them, these little tick boxes are how you enable them. And when you enable them, it brings up the icons of which ones you have enabled in your interface. And do note that you can only enable up to three at once. So do pick wisely. But you can always untick them and tick certain ones you want to use after. You can toggle them as you please, right? But to download them, we scroll all the way down. And unlike me, you won't have these plugins. So there'll just be one button and that's plugin store. So when we click on plugin store, it takes a few moments to load because it's obviously syncing with ChatGPT store, but this will pull all of the available plugins we have to download. Now there's a little search box, which is quite nice. So we can look for a particular keyword to try and find what we're looking for. So I could type in SEO and it'd come up with all the plugins that are based around SEO. So SEO assistant, which I've already installed. And also you can click on popular, which will filter the ones that people are most frequently using or they seem to like. So there's some pretty cool ones here, like to create notebooks, search YouTube video transcripts, financial data sources and Google search results. So that's just a general script plugin. Video insights to interact with online video, such as YouTube or daily motion content, and some really cool plugins like PDF ones again. Under new, this is plugins which are new to the platform. So they've recently been released. So we can have a look at what's brand new on the website. And all is obviously going to give you all the different pages. And then obviously around here, we can go through every single page. And as you can see at this point, there's a ton of pages, 56 pages of plugins, which doesn't seem like much, but remember these are all individual developers creating these developers and brands. So to say it's only been available as a beta feature for only a few weeks right now, we have a ton of different plugins. So there's plugins for literally everything, SEO, script writing, project management, crypto and investing. You can find literally everything. There's a ton of different use cases as well as the examples I showed you. So that's how to install them. Obviously installed filters the ones which we've already downloaded. I believe these do automatically still show in the catalogs, even though we've installed them. So I think the other catalogs like popular, new and all, they will still show the plugins we've already installed, which I think could be improved by removing that because we don't want to obviously redownload the same plugins. But that's how to filter our installed plugins. So that's how to use the plugin store. So let's just go ahead, click plugins, and we're going to enable one random plugin. So we're going to enable this one, AI Tool Hunt. Explore the ideal AI solutions for all use cases drawn from the most comprehensive database. So I'm going to tick that and I'm going to type in, tell me an AI tool I can use for script writing. So then it says model plugins and it says enable plugins and there's a little icon of the plugin I've enabled. And now when we ask a question, which is based around the certain use case of the particular plugin that we've enabled, in this case, the AI tool hunt, I've asked to find a certain AI tool for script writing. It's now going to have this box where it says used AI tool hunt, which means it's used the plugin. And if you press the drop down box, it's going to give you like all the script data. That doesn't really interest me. We don't need to know that. That's what you can do too. And it says, here are some AI tools which you can use for script writing. No in AI, Writely, Speedwrite, Glasp, Pseudowrite, Grammarly. And it's going to give descriptions of all of them if they have a certain cost for their monthly plan. It's going to give you kind of like a disclaimer that they're good for writing, but mainly as assistance rather than just writing a full script. And then it's going to give links to these particular websites and services on the AI Tool Hunt website. So it's going to give us some external links, which we can click on. I'll just click on one as an example. It's going to take us to Grammarly, which is a writing tool to help us with our grammar. And I've tried the free plugin. It's actually pretty good and it's going to direct us to the tools it suggested us so we can go ahead and download them or subscribe to them and it's as simple as that and that's how the plugin system of chat gpt works and it's particularly quite powerful so now if we press new chat in the top left hand side corner go to gpt4 and press browse with bing this will enable our bing search which is in beta now originally you did have to subscribe to bing search and i didn't have access to it i wasn't really too familiar with it for quite a while but for gpt4 subscribers it's now integrated into chat gpt so now when we type in a query, like I'll say, what is the capital of France and what can I do there? Let's just type in something like that. And it'll say now model colon web browsing. And now it will utilize the information that it pulls not only from chat GPT's training data up to 2021. And I believe GPT-4 might use some 2022 training data, but it will also pull data from the web browsing mode because we've enabled Bing web search. So it's going to give us some more extensive information on France. So it's going to say the capital of France is Paris. Paris is a city known 
for its rich history, stunning architecture and vibrant culture. Here are some things you could do in Paris. Eiffel Tower, Louvre, the Champs-Élysées, the Notre Dame Cathedral, the Montmartre District and enjoying French cuisine or taking a Sina river cruise. So there's some really cool stuff we can do here. Now I haven't been to Paris since I think it was like 2003. I would like to go again. Perhaps I can refer to this information later. But it's as simple as that. That is how to use ChatGPT's plugin system architecture, how to download new plugins from the plugin store, enable them, and specifically how to use them for each use case. I've given you some examples of these plugins, and I've also shown you how to use Bing's AI web search mode, all from the interface of ChatGPT. So I hope this video was useful. Leave any comments in the comment section down below if you've got any questions, or if you don't understand anything particular in this video, and I'll try my best to get back to you and help you out. All I ask is for you to subscribe and like the video to show me that it was valuable and I'll be bringing some really useful AI and business videos real soon. Thanks for watching.